Kinder are my favorite variety of halfling, and as a longtime fan of Dragonlance, I have some pretty high expectations for what a Kinder plays like in D&D. So how has D&D 5th edition, Shadow of the Dragon Queen, translated the Kinder into a playable ancestry? Well, first of all, gnomes and Kinder were more or less mistakes by Reorks. The, the god of creation on Kryn. They were early iterations of humanoids during Reorks' uh, experimental phase. They're so unpredictable that the wizards of high sorcery forbid casting certain kinds of magic on them for fear of disrupting reality. Fifth edition acknowledges this in Shadow of the Dragon Queen, so that's a really good start. Creature type and size. Kinders are small humanoids. Speed. A uh, kinder's walking speed is 30 feet. That seems to be the new standard for 5th edition. Kinder have smaller legs, so it's not completely unreasonable that they'd walk less far as someone with longer legs. However, the Dragonlance books never mention, like the novels, they never really talk about Tasselhoff or Flint, for that matter, who's a dwarf, having a, a hard time keeping up with the taller folk. So it makes sense that their speed is also 30 feet. In fact, there are a couple of scenes where, if I recall correctly, Tasselhoff and Flint are off leading the party because they're walking faster than everyone else. From a game design perspective, I, I usually like variation in player character abilities. I think it's potentially an interesting debate for a party to have, whether somebody moving faster should scout ahead, or whether the party's speed should reduce to 25 feet to account for the slowest members of the group. Then again, does it really matter? If it means that the whole party has to slow down to 25 feet every time one person decides to play an ancestry with the smallest size trait, then isn't it just easier to round everybody up to 30 instead? So I do see the design choice there. Fearless. One of the most defining traits of Kender from the novels is that they literally don't know fear. Well, technically they're not incapable of the emotion, because in the original Dragonlance novels, Tasselhoff does learn to experience fear sometimes. But generally, it's just not something they have access to. Even death, they think of as just another adventure. In 5th edition, you get advantage on saving throws to avoid or end the frightened condition on yourself. That strikes me as underpowered for a kinder. I want them to be immune to fear. However, as I've said, the novels do make it clear that kinder can be frightened with enough training, so I see why advantage, which to be fair is most often going to succeed, does make sense. To boost this feature though, once a day when you fail a saving throw to avoid or end the frightened condition on yourself, you can choose to succeed instead. That helps and is probably, to be fair, kinder to the dungeon master. I mean, in 5e, player characters get really powerful at higher levels, so giving the DM a sliver of a chance to land an effect is probably a good thing. Kender aptitude. You gain proficiency with one of your f with one of the following skills of your choice: insight, investigation, sleight of hand, stealth, or survival. This one feels a little weird to me. Sleight of hand, I think, shouldn't be op optional. It should be a built-in racial trait. Kinders collect things. They find stuff. They just end up with things. Half the time, they don't even realize they've taken something themselves. The official artwork in Shadow of the Dragon Queen shows two kinders with pouches. These pouches are where they keep the things they collect in their travels. No kinder leaves home without their pouches. Now, I don't allow player versus player in my games, so a kinder is never going to be stealing from another player, but I definitely approve of players rolling sleight of hand against an NPC. If a kinder is near an enemy guard, then I would absolutely allow the kinder to roll a d100 to see whether they absent-mindedly pickpocketed anything of value from the card. If they're from, if they're near a city guard, a, a lawful good city guard, I would probably force them to roll a d100 to see whether they absent-mindedly pickpocketed something from this lawful character. That's just part of the kinder nature. And arguably even more importantly, kinders are famously immune to locks. They, they don't give locks a second thought. A lock to a kinder is just part of the doorknob. It's a natural step to opening a door. It's so severe that kinders in prison are known to let themselves out for a daily walk and then put themselves back in. Sleight of hand should be a foregone conclusion for a kinder character. It's a birthright. I guess you could argue that sleight of hand isn't a, a lock pick check. 
So, you know, it would really just be a dexterity plus tools thieves. So maybe that's not a big deal, but I don't know. It's just the spirit of a kinder having severe proficiency with with dexterity of, of hands for disabling traps, picking locks, pickpocketing is just an essential trait. Stealth, I also kind of think of as a kinder trait, but then again, probably not every kinder is great at that. So it makes sense for it to be optional, I guess. I don't know. I feel like it is something that because of their size and just because they so often kind of go unnoticed, I think they kind of default to stealth, even if they don't mean to. The options for investigation and survival are puzzling. I guess you have to choose something, and, and those do seem to relate to the gnomish connection. Kinder, having been fashioned along with gnomes, probably are good at figuring things out, so the insight and the investigation sort of tie into that. Kinders like to wander around. They they have wanderlust. They, they, they leave home very early and never go back. So I would assume that they would develop survival skills. So all in all, this one's okay. But for sleight of hand, I just, I can't accept that being an option. I, I think I would, I would, I would want that to be built in and, and literally possibly double proficiency. Like it's that important. Taunt. You have an extraordinary ability to fluster creatures. As a bonus action, you can unleash a string of provoking words at a creature within 60 feet of yourself that can hear and understand you. And then they must succeed at a wisdom saving throw or it has disadvantage on attack rolls against targets other than you. This is just bizarre to me. This is, this is sort of like, I mean, it's, it feels like vicious mockery or something, and I just don't know what they're trying to tie into here. Um, I mean, kinder do seem to be unexpected everywhere they go. People in the original novels always seem to be taken by surprise when they notice a kinder nearby, and, and they do seem flustered by it. But that's not the kinder taunting them, that's just them knowing the kinder reputation for pickpocketing, to be honest. I guess that's not what this is meant to convey, because it, it is literally a taunt. It, it, it says very explicitly that you use... You unleash a, a string of words at someone to to fluster them. That feels very strange. I mean, it's a combat ability, and I never really thought of Kender having an advantage in combat for any reason other than there's their size and agility. And again, there's the kind of innate stealth. Like people don't t tend to notice them because of their size. I I'm not sure what this is trying to capture. This reads this reads. It feels like vicious mockery or something like that, and I don't understand where that's coming from. That does not feel like kinder trait to me. That is that is strange. Hupak. This isn't really part of the kinder ancestry or race, uh, but the hupak is the classic kinder weapon. It is a staff with a slingshot on one end, and happily it is in the shadow of the Dragon Queen. So your kinder actually looks like a kinder carrying around a hupak. Now let's talk about what's missing. So a very minor one here. The artwork in the shadow of the Dragon Queen shows two kinder with their hair in a top knot, but the text doesn't mention it at all anywhere. I mean, it's a tiny, tiny, tiny thing. It's, it's, and it's not even that big of a deal, really. But if we're going to talk about kinder culture, then it's kind of a shame to leave out the prevailing hairstyle. The top knot is just an iconic way that kinder wear their hair. It's just what they do. And I'm sorry that that didn't make it into the text, because I feel like Someone looking at that picture would probably not notice, and then if you do notice, you probably would just think it was those two kinder. You wouldn't necessarily think it's all kinder. And I mean, I, to be fair, I don't know that it's all kinder, but it is a it is a popular thing among kinder. Kinder pouches. To my great surprise, there's no mention of kinder pouches, at least in the mechanical sense. Next to them being fearless, the other defining characteristics of kinder, oh yeah, and them being really good at pickpocketing and lockpicking, the other other defining characteristic of kinder is that they collect things, which I've mentioned before, seemingly by accident. I would happily trade the very puzzling taunt ability for a mechanical benefit based around a kinder's collection. It's not hard because second edition AD&D has already done this. When you were playing a kinder in AD&D and you needed some small item, you could roll a d100 to see whether you had it in, in one of your pouches. If you rolled 1 to 20, you find a harmless item, which is defined as like string or nails or feathers or stones in your pouch. Roll a 21 to 60, you have a mundane, some kind of mundane equipment. So essentially any small item 
from the adventuring gear table in the player handbook. Roll 61 to 100, and you get you 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 could have a common magical item. The catch is though that a kinder's pouch is an ever rotating stock. One day you have an ersatz eye, and the next day you don't. So it's not an endless font of items that you can keep using and reusing. It's it's an unexpected item that sometimes is completely useless, and other times exactly what you need in that moment. It was a really fun mechanic then, and I think it's a real shame that it's not a mechanic now. Anyway, it's definitely a mechanic I'm going to be using in my game. I think it's even less dangerous than a, a wild magic table, to be honest. It is just, it's just fun. And it's a great way to get players unstuck. I mean, how many times have you had players standing in front of the thing that they need to do, but no reasonable way to get around it or through it. If you have a kinder on the team and you know what you need, then there's a really good chance that they have that item or something like it in their pouch. And that can progress the adventure. So kinder as a whole are stricken with wonderlust as a rule. They love exploring, they love adventure, they love new experiences. They are in many ways the single race most fitting to Dungeons and Dragons. If you want to foolishly rush into dangerous situations, grab all the loot, and then slip away blissfully leaving chaos in your wake, then you want to play a kinder. Talk to your dungeon master for the modest adjustments of getting a sleight of hand for free, again arguably with double proficiency, and a mechanic for kinder pouches. Thanks for watching!